For lesson 13, number one, we've got the depth of a lake is 15.8 meters. Jada accurately measured the depth of the lake to the nearest meter. What measurement did Jada get? So if she's measuring it to the nearest meter, uh, she probably doesn't have that kind of precision where it's 15.8. So she probably got 16 meters. All right, 16. For question B, how many meters does the measured depth differ from the actual depth? So you're just going to subtract 16 minus 15.8, which equals uh, 2 tenths. So there's the error right there. All right, now for C, we're ready to wrap it all up. We got express the measurement error as a percentage of the actual depth. So, so what we're going to do for this one is we're going to do we're going to do the amount of error. We're going to do the amount of error over the actual measurement, and just multiply that by 100. All right, now this is really no different than the part, you know, divided by the whole. All right, the part is the error, you know, how much were they off? And the whole is like the original number, you know, we're, what, what's it, you know, in this case, it's the actual literal measurement, you know, not just like, you know, a human error was involved. It's, <clears throat> it's very, very precise. All right, so we're going to do for this one, we're going to do um, 0.2 divided by 15.8. And then you're going to multiply that by 100 and do that. So I'm going to do that, I'm 0.2 divided by 15.8 times 100, <clears throat> and I get 1.26582 something blank, whatever. All right, so you got that, and, um, and I think one decimal place should do. So that 2 is going to round up. So this is going to be about 1.3%. Error. So that's that's not too bad of an error right there. Okay, number two, watermelon weighs 8,475 grams. A scale measured the weight with an error of 12% under the actual weight. <clears throat> what was the actual, or what was the measured weight? We already know the actual weight is that. So for this one, now this is describing a percent of change. And the percent of change is like it looks like it's a deficit where it's decreasing. And so you're going to do 100, you're going to do 100 minus 12, which equals 88, 88%. All right, which we're going to change that to 0.88. So we're going to do 88 hundredths times 8,475. All right, we're going to do that, and you're going to get 7,000. 400, I don't know, off the top of my head. I think I'm right. Seven. Oh, yeah. 7,458. All right, NOAA's oven thermometer gives a reading that is 2% greater than the actual temperature. So if the actual temperature is 325%, what will the thermometer reading be? Now this is describing uh, percent of increase, 100%. So it's going to be 102%, which comes out to 1.02. So that's going to be the number we're going to use in our equations. Uh, so the actual temperature was 325, so this is pretty much the percent times 325 and that will equal the new amount that'll equal the the amount with the change you know included now if we just did if we just did two percent times 325 that's not wrong it's not going to be wrong but that's only going to give you the percent or the amount that the temperature went up it's not going to give you the actual the temperature now so you have to add that on to 325 but if you just do that um, you should get 331, right? 331.5 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Uh, for B, we're going the other direction with it. So, so if the thermometer reading is 76, what is the actual temperature? 
All right, so unlike the last one we just did, we don't know what the actual number is, but we do know what the ending temperature was, what the, you know, what it changed to. It changed to 76. So that's what it changed to. So you're going to divide by 1.02. You're going to do all that. And my calculator here, you got 76 divided by 1.02. Yeah, I thought that came out kind of weird, but <clears throat> so I've got 74.5098 whatever blank. All right, so you got that. And so that's going to be, I, I think, one decimal place should do it. One decimal place should do it. So we're going to get like 74 and a half degrees approximately, right? About 74.5 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Question number four. At the beginning of the month, there were 80 ounces of peanut butter in the pantry. Now there's a third less than that. All right, so how many ounces of peanut butter are in the pantry now? All right, so we got uh, something that's describing a decrease, a decrease. So, um, so if there's two-thirds less than that, there's two-thirds less than that. If I just, you know, you don't have to draw a picture here, but if there's two-thirds less than that, Right, this is my best rep representation there of thirds. Okay, so there's that's not included anymore. So that right there leaves us. That leaves us with two thirds. All right, and that's gonna be two thirds of eighty, because the whole thing represented eighty. Right, the whole thing, hundred percent of it, was eighty. And which choice is that? Oh, that's A. It's right away. It's the very first one. And it's convenient. Does it say there's more? No, there's not more than one answer. I don't think so. All right, next problem number five. Five A. Fill in the table for side lengths and area of a different square. Now remember, if it's um, if it's area of a rectangular square, area is you know length times width. If it's a square, it's just side times side. You know, side squared. Because the nice thing about a square is that all the side lengths are the same. So Three times three. You know, I'm not going to draw a picture for every one of these, but that's really all there is to it. And so three times three is nine. A hundred times a hundred is ten thousand. And um, what do we got here? Twenty-five times twenty-five is six hundred twenty-five. And then uh, here's the algebra component. That's going to be s squared. S times itself is s squared. Now the question here is asking us whether it's is the relationship proportional and no it is not because in in order for it to be proportional we would have to have the same constant proportionality all right so um, right off the bat you can multiply by three but that doesn't work for any others right pretty obvious that does not work for any of the other ones um, yeah, 100 times 3 is 300. 25 times 3 is 75. So that that does not work with all of them. It's got to, you know, in order for it to be a proportional relationship, that times 3 would have to work for everything. So there's no number that we can multiply, you know, the same number by to get the area. So area, you know, if we remember us the discussions from the previous unit, area is just not proportional. Circumference, yeah, that is proportional, right? Uh, but not area.